Ivan from the LaCroix Cruiser here. You see we have our engine apart. Now we've had it apart for a couple of days now and we just wanted to explain why it's apart and what led to this. So let me flip the camera around and we'll show you the other side. So what caused all of our problems and our problems are the following. We had very low power, the turbo was not producing any boost and the we had excessive blow by meaning that the compression, instead of producing power, was going into the pan, causing oil to seep out of everywhere. So the big problem or the big cause of that was the liners, these parts here, weren't fitting properly inside the cylinders. And that's evidenced here by the burning. Now these are what's called a dry fit liner. There's not supposed to be any liquid between the two sides. By dry fit, the maximum specification is two thousandths of an inch. Some of the liners that we pulled out had over five thousandths of an inch of space between the liner and the bore, meaning that they got caked in oil and being caked in oil, that is not a good transmitter of heat. So that's what caused the burning. Now this is a new liner. Uh, this cylinder, we didn't have to bore at all to put the new liner in. And this is an oversized liner. This is a number three liner. And you can see the, the number stamped here. So there was a one stamped. We just stamped a number three over it, which is the standard procedure because we're putting number three liners in. And you can see how the number three liners fit in. And that's, it has exactly two thousandths of an inch of space. These are the liners we pulled out of the bus. As you can see, they're covered in oil. That's because of the blow by. And they have burning marks all over them. Now, the other thing that this excessive blow by caused is this accumulation of carbon in the ports. This accumulation of carbon in the ports, occasionally a piece of that will break off. When it breaks off, it goes out the exhaust valves through the exhaust system and eventually hitting the turbo. And this is what it does to the turbo. So that impeller is supposed to uh, be a lot longer than that. So, so these impellers are supposed to go up like, up like this, but they were taken out by little chunks coming through the exhaust system. So that reduced the boost as well. Now, over the last year, since we had the engine rebuilt, we had the turbo rebuilt three times because of that. But the cause wasn't exactly identified. The pistons themselves, you can see how they're all scored as well. And these are two piece pistons. So we have the top of the piston and the skirt come together. They're held together with these pins. And if you look at the pin, those little marks at either end, well, that's where this bearing sits. And these were all new 625 hours ago. So we can see the shape of the bearing there. So when they were put in, there's a two, two bolts that hold the connecting rod to there more than likely they were slightly over torqued. And that caused this. The wear inside this bushing. Now this sits, this slides into the piston here. Like so. pin sits on it the connecting rod bolts up there speaking of connecting rods these are the connecting rod bushings there are two possible root causes to the excessive wear in these bearings because 
The engine's only been used 625 hours, and normally you can go a lot more than that between rebuilds. Uh, two things. First of all, the liners being loose, the pistons and the liners would could vibrate. That vibration translates to all sorts of weird stresses within the engine. The other thing is, when the engine was originally started up, before that first startup, there was no pressure testing done to the fuel system. That little mistake caused oil to be made, or the term making oil, which is fuel going into the oil. That fuel dilutes the oil considerably. Now, yes, we only drove it 40 miles that way, but the damage was already done. The first time we had the turbo rebuilt, which was less than a month after we had the engine rebuilt, uh, and it was a fresh rebuild on the turbo when we had the engine rebuilt, the turbo builder told me, your engine is probably scrap. Because if it did this to the bearings of the turbo, your bearings within the engine are probably gone as well. And he was right. So that's what we can see here on these bearings. Uh, they're, you know, that's a lot of wear for 600 hours. The other point of damage was a camshaft camshafts actually both of them they need to be replaced as we can see there's it's called galling and on the lobes of the camshaft and if we measure the lobes they're uh, a little small to put it lightly uh, they've been worn down now what has caused this the followers the cam followers their little rollers were not inserted properly into the heads there's a specific, specific way of inserting them and also a uh, method of aligning them. They weren't aligned and they were actually put in the wrong way. And I'll insert a little video here to show you that. Oh, uh, you can see how crooked this one is. And it, it's like the slipper version of the one where, yeah. and we tried to break one of them loose and they're supposed to be 60 pounds and they're real touchy about them. Yeah, to have a breaker bar to break one of those. You can see how crooked it is. How tilted it is. The oil holes on some of them are facing the wrong way. So the oil holes should be away from the exhaust valves. So there's an oil hole on here. As you can see here, there's an oil hole there. The tree is the yeah. wrong way. So they should be facing this way. And this, one, yeah. this one had a combination. So this one was correct, these two were wrong. Three is uh, no good. Yeah. Three facing the wrong way. From there, that caused the cams to work. So we're having to replace the liners the bushings, bearings, pistons, camshafts, and the turbo rebuilt again. So when you're having your engine rebuilt, make sure that you know where, you know what you're doing. You're following the instructions in the book by the letter. There's torque specs for everything. There's measurements for everything. Follow those measurements. It could save you a lot of time and a lot of problems.